I welcome everybody to our December meeting of Central Oklahoma Transportation and Parking Authority. Uh, items from the chairman. I hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving and have started their New Year's resolution diet early after what I had to do on Thanksgiving. So, uh, do we have any citizens to be heard? If not, we have minutes from our board meeting of November 1st and our finance committee meeting, which we held yesterday. Do I hear any changes or discussion on any of the minutes by any of the trustees? If not, I would have a motion to approve our board minutes. All in favor? Opposed? And then our finance committee meeting. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Consent docket. Uh, any items on the consent docket? Uh, I asked Jason about item F. That was uh, something I hadn't seemed like I hadn't seen before, and he had a brief explanation for the trust trustees. So. Yes, sir. So this is a resolution um, authorizing the administrator to execute and file application for basically FTA grants to benefit public transportation uh, in our urbanized area. Um, this is something we uh, do every year as part of our uh, certs and assurances processes, uh, just making sure that the trust, the, the policy making or, or governing body uh, approves that the administrator submit these applications for these FTA grant funds. Um, so we've named the, or I should say we've listed the individual grant programs in the memo. Uh, the 5307 is your uh, familiar with is our formula grant, which makes up uh, the majority of our grant funds. Uh, 5310 uh, is the uh, uh, older Americans uh, funds. 5337 is uh, state of good repair. And then 5339 is the bus and bus facilities. So um, again, just one of those housekeeping items we try to bring to the trust every year for approval. And then item G uh, with Norman, you all will see when we get to the budget item, you'll see the, the uh, integration of Norman into our budget, revised budget, and see the effects of that. So any other questions on any of the consent docket? Then I would have a motion to approve our consent docket. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Items for individual consideration is authorize the administrator to advertise a request for qualifications for public art on our new parking garage next to the convention center. Yes, item 6A will get us started on um, the 1% art project that will be associated with the new garage that we're constructing to support the uh, convention center and Scissor Tail Park and uh, the new hotel uh, that's being constructed. So um, in your packet, you have a uh, copy of the request for qualifications that's going to be going out. Um, we have worked with the uh, city's uh, art uh, liaison uh, to help put this uh, request for qualifications together. And uh, that office at, will, will actually help us navigate you know, kind of this entire process of, of selecting the artist uh, and awarding the contract. So um, give you an idea of the overall budget on 1%, uh, our 1% for art amount is 262000 uh, You can see in your memo kind of a breakdown of the, the uh, costs associated with that amount. Um, we're anticipating that the award to the artist will be about 134000 um, As part of the art project, um, the call to the artists is going to go out on December 9th. Um, we expect proposals to be submitted by January the 8th. Um, artist selection will occur in March. And then uh, we look forward to bringing a contract to the trust in April. Of course, that contract will be for the duration of the, of the project and construction of the garage. Um, that schedule that I just briefly went over is included in the request for proposal, or I should say request for qualifications packet um, that is part of, your, part of your trust agenda if you want to refer to that in the future. And as you and I discussed, in the, in the construction of the garage, those colored tiles that they propose, that is part of the construction of the garage, not part of this art project. Right, 
Yep, yeah, there's a there's a there's a uh, part of the one percent art is already yes included in the construction contract that we we awarded, and that's like you say the materials, basically the little tiles and the fasteners. So this piece is the design that those tiles will be in. That's right. Yeah, yeah, the artist will actually do the des do the design work and kind of manage and oversee well, the, the, the installation. What you showed me looked like a. I mean, maybe the tiles were up there, but then they'd overlay some design of, you had buffaloes, but it may not be buffaloes, but it uh, it would be a design over those tiles. Now, the, the tiles, the little tile pieces, that will actually be the, the, be the, be the art. Be the art. How those tiles are arranged and configured will create the image that, okay. that's going to be on the, on the skin the of the project. the tiles were part of the original contract for the construction that's of the right. garage. Okay. All right. Any other questions? And I have a motion to approve item A. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Item B is a uh, approval of a sublease agreement with the City of Oklahoma City for uh, uh, a parking lot east on the other side of the tracks, the east lot for parking operations. Yes, so with approval of this lease between um, COTPA, the City of Oklahoma City, and the Oklahoma City Public Property Authority, we will actually uh, be able to expand our surface parking lot operations. Um, this lot, this parking lot, as mentioned, um, is located you know, directly east of the BNSF uh, railroad tracks, uh, located between Maine and Sheridan. And this piece of property uh, actually was um, deeded to the city of Oklahoma City from ODOT as part of the uh, in-kind match contributions for the overall Santa Fe Depot renovation project. If you'll remember, that project uh, was a combination of um, you know, the city, ODOT, and ACOG all you know, contributing uh, to that renovation. So this is that part of that ODOT in-kind contribution. Um, so with uh, approval of this lease, COPPA will then take over the uh, management of that surface lot uh, our intention is to continue offering surf, uh, I should say, con monthly contracted parking um, on that piece of property and then being able to also leverage that lot for uh, event parking um, and transient parking. Uh, the arrangement that we have with the PPA is basically a split of the net revenues and it's similar to how we it's, it's basically similar to the arrangement we have with the PPA for another surface lot, lot 61, which is to the south of the Santa Fe Depot. And in that revenue sharing arrangement, we will basically uh, split the revenue, the net revenue, 70-30, with 70% going to COTPA and 30% going back to the PPA. And on the agenda item, the revenue says net 60000 so. We're, we're recovering the estimated cost, and then the net is 60. Yeah, so... Is that the cop to in the city, and we're splitting that, or is that cop to share? Yeah, so that is the... That's actually our estimated total net revenue, and then from that, 30, approximately 30... Okay. Or 30% would go to the PPA. Now, again, um, it's an estimated cost and revenue amount. I mean, ideally, we'd be able to maximize not only the monthly contract parkers, but try to generate some more revenue through events and transit. So hopefully the amounts are, are larger than that. What did you need that for, Brent, that 30%? Did you have a use for it? Uh, yes, for really, really Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it pays your salary. Oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, one other item I, I, I do need to mention is that the lease is actually through March 30th of 2024. Um, you'll notice your memo references 2022. So the lease is, is actually about four years and four months, uh, the initial term. And uh, kind of the odd timing on that, why is it four years and four months? We wanted to set this lease up so that the term ended at the same time as our other lease with the PPA on lot 61 so we could basically administratively take care of both of them. At the was same that time. lot involved? I mean, I don't remember all the renderings of, you know, the uh, rail service that's been proposed and how they're going to turn around in there. Is that lot involved? Would, would that lot be involved in any of that, or do you know? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'd have to just look at the hub study and, you know, see what the alignment 
was if it went through that lot. I, I don't. Rec I mean, we've talked a lot about you know uh, different uh, additional rail service coming in from the east mm -hmm. and how that would impact you know properties ad adjacent to that BNSF uh, track. Well, it, it I don't be, recall this parking lot. It being could be involved. beneficial if it is involved now that we mm -hmm. own the lot. So. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions from any of the trustees? Then I hear a motion to approve item B. So moved. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Item C is a resolution for free rides on our fixed bus routes uh, through December 31st. Yeah, so with approval of this item, uh, we will be offering free transit in the city of Oklahoma City for uh, New Year's Eve. So I encourage everyone to take advantage of, of that on New Year's Eve. Okay, and then I guess Jesse will update us the streetcar what free service or half price that we're having on some of that service. Yeah, we have free service on the weekends yep. for the streetcar. All right. I have a motion to approve item C. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Item D is adopt the COPTA's fiscal year 2020 amended operating budget, which we had lengthy discussions on in our finance committee meeting yesterday, but uh, uh, Jason may want to update the rest of the trustees on that. Sure. So just to uh, recap, uh, the budget amendment that is before you um, increases our overall budget by $3.6 million, and that increase is all uh, attributed to our transit operations, specifically our agreement with the city of Norman for providing transit service uh, in that community. As you'll recall, we entered into an interlocal agreement with the city of Norman after the initial budget had been developed and adopted. So uh, what this action does today in terms of the budget amendment for the transportation uh, part of our operating budget, it will increase both revenues and expenditures by 3.6 million to account for one, the revenue we expect from the city of Norman to fund the expenses that we'll incur in providing the, the service. Um, and so you'll, in your packet, you have a, a budget summary uh, basically labeled, you know, COTPA Transit Bus uh, Norman, and that's where you can see uh, what budget categories will be affected. So the budget is increasing by 3.6 million for transit operations. The other part of the budget amendment is basically aligning the parking budget to where we will actually spend our funds. Um, and the reason for the change is primarily a reduction in what we had budgeted to pay for debt service. Um, with the defeasance of our 2013 bonds and the issuance of new bonds, you know, we've talked about it in previous uh, finance committee meetings, parking committee meetings, here from the, the trust meetings, we were able to save a considerable amount of, of money not only on debt service through you know the life of the bonds, but um, our annual debt service amount decreased uh, substantially as well. So with this budget amendment, what we're doing is reducing the amount we had budgeted to basically pay for debt by $633,000 and then we're taking that savings and we're budgeting that in our transfer to our capital reserves line. So the net effect is no overall change to the budget. It's just aligning those budget categories where we'll actually incur the expenses or transfer. All right. Any questions by any of the trustees? Then I'd have a motion to approve item D. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Oh. Uh, we're pulling item E. So. Uh, we won't, we won't uh, consider that. Uh, next item is ratification of claims and payroll. Uh, if, there, if the trustees have reviewed that, if there are no questions, I'd have a motion to approve our uh, schedule of revenues. So oh, yep. excuse me, are there any, I mean, on the budget, is there anything you'd like to discuss on that? Or? On the... Uh, Oh, these are just the vendor claims. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. The next is our uh, review our financial reports, budget to actual for the four months ended October 31st. 
Yes, sir. I have uh, just a few comments for the trustees, and I'll limit my comments to the uh, transportation operations, the parking operations, and then the streetcar operations. So if you uh, turn to page two on your budget to actual report, looking at our transportation operations, uh, I think I would, if I could direct your attention first to the operating income, uh, you'll notice that through four months of the fiscal year, uh, we, our, our uh, expenses have exceeded our revenues by just under 1.6 million. But again, just as a reminder for the trust, um, as we begin each fiscal year, um, our reimbursements on our federal grants and the funding we receive from the state um, lag our expenditures, okay? So if you look at the federal grant revenue line uh, back in the top portion of your report, you'll notice we have about 7.6 million budgeted. We expect to receive during the entire fiscal year. Our original budget to date, however, is only 691,000. And again, that's because we have to incur the expenses, then seek reimbursement, and not to mention the fact that there's at least a month generally built in where we're not able to do a reimbursement uh, draw request because of the, just the management of the federal grant system and how they kind of shut our system down um, and reset it for the next federal fiscal year. So we're on track really in terms of our budget um, and as we get through uh, subsequent months of the fiscal year you'll see that federal grant revenue uh, increase substantially. And then on the state uh, government subsidy uh, we're expecting um, our first uh, payment from the state in December. We usually get that three times a year. So once you get those revenues, the timing of those revenues coming in, we do expect to, to decrease that operating uh, deficit substantially. So if you look down at the expenditures, you'll see we have uh, savings in just about every one of the uh, expenditure uh, categories. I uh, would mention fuel there. You'll notice we have about 66000 in savings through four months of the fiscal year. And again, with the uh, opening of our CNG facility, uh, in the next calendar year, we hope that that savings will increase even, even more once we are able to fuel at our own facility. Um, Jason, when will yes. that occur? Yeah, well, we're looking to commission it in Jan January. Um, again, that's assuming all the tests go perfect. We don't have any issues, but it's, it's, it's getting there. It's almost there. Jason? Since serving on COPPA in summer, beginning summer of 15, I think, this state government subsidy has always been the same. When was the, when was the last time? Yeah. Huh? Since I started. <laughs> Since you started. That's what I was going to ask. How long has this been the amount? Like, when's the last yeah. time? Does anyone know? Is it I think it goes back to 2005, if I remember correctly. I think that was the last time it was changed. Thank you. <laughs> All right, next page. Uh, page three, parking operations, a couple of comments there. Um, similar to what I've uh, pointed out in previous months, but just when you look at our overall revenues, uh, we're tracking uh, close to our budgeted amount. We're about 40000 less than what we had anticipated through four months of the fiscal year. Uh, our monthly contracted revenue does continue uh, to lag our budget. Um, you can see we have a, var a negative variance there of 80000 but that is being offset by transient revenue and event revenue coming in uh, ahead of our budget. Um, on the parking garage operation expenditures, uh, you'll notice we show to be 347000 over budget through four months of the fiscal year, and that is due to the timing of some of our payments to Republic Parking Systems, our contractor for uh, our parking operations. Um, we actually uh, paid our September uh, expenses, our, our invoice we received in September in October. As I've mentioned before, usually we have about a 60-day lag by the time we review and reconcile all those um, expenditures for the month. This. Uh, this October, we happened to get that paid earlier than what we had projected. 
Um, that overage also includes 198,000 of expenses from FY19 uh, that were paid in uh, FY20. So again, I would expect our November financials, uh, you would see that particular expenditure line to be much more uh, in line with what our budget is. Uh, overall, uh, operating income uh, we show to be uh, uh, 14,000 more in expenses than what we had revenue. I mean, essentially, we're even. Um, but again, that, that timing on those Republic payments has our expenditures a little bit higher than what we had expected. Um, and then finishing up, uh, if we could go to page six, just a couple of comments on our streetcar operations. Um, overall revenues are pretty much in line uh, with budget. We're you know, 22,000 under what we had projected. Most of that is coming from less uh, streetcar fare revenue that collected than what we had uh, budgeted. Um, looking at the expenditure side, um, we're showing to have uh, savings in services and fees, streetcar operations and supplies. I'll direct your attention to our streetcar operations line. This is our largest budgeted item. This is our contract with um, Herzog Transit uh, Services. We've actually only paid uh, two of our monthly invoices, so those expenses that you see really only reflect July and August. So the savings that you see of 195 um, is, is really not reflective of the expenses that we've, we've incurred to date. So uh, as you see, November's financial and December's financial, you should see that savings uh, dissipate. Uh, overall, our operating income shows to be 1.2 million, uh, which means revenues are uh, 1.2 million higher than our expenditures. But again, I just would point you back to the main revenue source for the streetcar operation, and that is the general fund subsidy. We've actually drawn about half of that subsidy up front. So as we do with some of our other subsidies, we spend that down throughout the year. So that operating income line variance will shrink as we, as we move throughout the fiscal year. So with that, I'm glad to answer any other questions on the financials. Right. Any questions? Not, then I'd have a motion to approve our financial reports. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, our program reports. First is streetcar reports, I guess. Jesse? Good morning. Hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, today's a big day. So today marks three years and we have an opportunity of providing streetcar updates to the board. Um, Today is also another big day. Uh, Mr. Scroggins is turning 21 today. Uh, and also, speaking of uh, birthdays, we are just a mere nine days away from our one-year anniversary of streetcar operations. So it's been a, a very, very short year. <clears throat> so we'll jump right into the program here. Um, so we recently received our uh, draft program standard from ODOT. So the program standard is essentially the governing document that ODOT uses as safety oversight of the streetcar system. Uh, the document was nearly 600 pages long, and we, uh, through our review cycle, we provided uh, over 400 comments and suggestions back to ODOT, and we're hoping to see the, the final document uh, come out here in the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, <clears throat> April 26th is quickly approaching, so we uh, went ahead and took the effort to reach out to Oklahoma City Memorial Marathon and get out in front of that, uh, working with OCPD to maximize uh, the service whenever the Memorial Marathon is happening. And uh, we're finalizing some of our suggestions and uh, ideas with the OCPD and Memorial, uh, again, to maximize service during, during the marathon. Um, <clears throat> OKC Streetcar and Embark was able to host the uh, National Transit Institutes, the NTI, uh, training for the uh, NTD reporting. Uh, we had that training here at the, the downtown library, the Ronald J. Nort downtown library. That was a two-day training exercise. Uh, we had, I think we had nearly 10 people from Embark attend that training. And these, 
these trainings are super, super helpful for all of us and always looking to learn more. Uh, again, OKC Streetcar hosted the SSM Health, uh, Dr. Kevin Lewis's program on board the streetcar. So that's a, a weekly event on board the streetcar where he's on the streetcar providing health guidance with people and then he has also got his, his program. So this past month, uh, he did uh, maintaining an active lifestyle, uh, the importance of getting your flu vaccine, women's health, and uh, health benefits of having a positive attitude. So this is a great program for us and uh, obviously Take advantage of it if you can. Uh, as we do every month, we uh, rolled out a couple more Love the Loop videos. Uh, so this one is for the American Banjo Museum, and we also have one for OK Runner. you've never been to the Banjo Museum, I highly recommend it. It is a wonderfully done museum. Totally agree. Um, I still haven't learned how to play the banjo yet, but I hope to learn someday. Um, <clears throat> so OKC Streetcar and Embark provided uh, free rides for, on Veterans Day for veterans. All they had to do was show their ID and, uh, and ride free. Uh, so OKC Streetcar also hosted the, uh, the Yelp OKC Elite event, so essentially they went around the streetcar route, hopping off, uh, checking out different restaurants and stuff, and Michael was their guide. Uh, so we always happy to do events like this, and uh, we were able to spin that off into some social media uh, stuff for OKC Streetcar and then also the Yelp OKC. Uh, as always, we have our Arts Move event. Uh, <clears throat> this this uh, past month, we had Gabriel Hancock performing on board the streetcar, again, performing live music on the streetcar. It's always fun. If you get a chance, get out and check it out. Uh, OK Streetcar was also providing service uh, during Lights on Broadway. Uh, so I just wanted to share a quick story of something that I saw while, uh, so me and our general manager, Carla Barnaby, we were out uh, while the Lights on Broadway event were going on, uh, helping with the streetcar, making sure things were running smoothly. And so what we noticed was people using the system as intended, right? So they would ride the streetcar, into Automobile Alley, check out the events that were going on in Automobile Alley, and then they'd go ahead and walk that one block west to Robinson and pick up the streetcar and then ride it back to where they parked or into Bricktown, downtown to other events and stuff. So it was, it was super awesome seeing people understand the system and how to use it. So I just wanted to share that story real quick. So, and awesome event. We saw lots of people downtown, or I'm sorry, in Automobile Alley, people walking around, going to all the outdoor events. Just incredible event that, uh, that was put on. Um, so you alluded to the, the free uh, streetcar stuff. So we are uh, starting back in November 22nd on, on the weekends, which is Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, we're providing free streetcar service uh, all the way up to January 5th. So that coincides with all the downtown and December events and, and things like that. Uh, yep. Uh, on the Saturday after Thanksgiving, I took a brick down. Mm -hmm. Hardly anybody was in brick down, but the, the streetcars were standing Yep. Never had a seat. Yeah, it was. It, we've we've had some pretty good ridership, and it's been great. Thanks. Uh, also, just a reminder: there's only two days left to get your half-priced uh, uh, transit passes. Uh, December eighth is the the cutoff date there, so make sure you get your half-priced passes. All right. So, talking of ridership, so. <clears throat> um, November was a good month for us also. Our total ridership for November was uh, just over 28,000. So you can kind of see the shift in colors on the, on the chart there. The lighter blue are the weekends that we were free. And so you can see uh, a slight uptick there with ridership. Um, again, a good month for us, nearly 30,000. Um, so looking back over the course of, uh, of us beginning service with the streetcar, we've been averaging about 35,000 riders per month. So it's Pretty great for Oklahoma City with our the amount of uh, residents we have living downtown. And then monthly, uh, again, 
were 28,000. So our total ridership uh, since beginning service, 428,838. So we're quickly closing in on that half mile mark or half, half a million mark. Uh, again, I've included this graph here so you can kind of see how all that ridership breaks down. Uh, our average weekday in November was 661 riders. Our average weekend was just over 1,600. And our average cumulative riders per service hour is uh, right at uh, nearly 13. So pretty great ridership. Shall I go back? You guys look like you're still looking at it. Sorry. Good? Uh -huh. All right. Yeah. That concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to take any questions. Any questions many of the trustees? All right, Jesse, thank All you. Right. Thank you. Well, you didn't mention, did you mention the, the celebration for the anniversary? I didn't because our 21-year-old will be uh, oh, okay. talking about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we had it all planned. Yeah. Oh, you got it all? All right. Thank, thank you. you. Our next is our parking system report. Good morning, everyone. Take this opportunity to update you on the parking garage construction. Uh, when we last met, we saw our very own lake um, at, um, last month, and then us back to work the following day. Lots of progress in the following uh, pictures. Uh, first, start off with safety. Our subcontractors are performing uh, daily safety before uh, beginning work. Uh, didn't stay around to watch their uh, calisthenics, but um, I'm told that calisthenics happens after this. Um, again, on the safety theme, uh, this is where we're taking uh, concrete samples from every truck, storing them and making sure um, a, a week afterwards they'll test the uh, samples up to a month uh, later to ensure that everything was poured correctly and is safe. Several weeks ago, we did install our very first crane um, and our only crane. Um, this is one of our piers, approximately about 60 feet. Most of them are going down 60 feet to the uh, bedrock. Some are a little shallower um, when we're working in the basement of the garage, that small 20, 30 parking spaces, it's below grade. Um, here's our uh, elevator uh, tower. Uh, foundation, uh, rebar being installed, the foundation. Again, keep in mind that the elevator uh, tower is a separate building that will connect to the garage. It's completely freestanding. Came up above ground a few days, uh, last week, I, I believe I took this picture, and then this picture was taken this week, again, of the elevator core. The uh, elevator core will grow about one parking floor per week. Um, so that will, that will be the tallest portion for a while <laughs> of the project. Aerial view of some uh, shear wall footings for our foundation, a lot of rebar. That rebar, just so you know, is about the height of a person. It goes that far down into the ground. Uh, it gives a little more perspective of all the rebar being used uh, for the foundations. <clears throat> um, here was our first larger pour, uh, started in the middle of the morning, took 60-some uh, trucks and most of the day to complete the entire pour. Uh, first uh, columns coming out of the ground. Um, again, this is in the basement that they're working, but um, we are above ground now, um, and we are now uh, forming walls for our basement. Um, so it, quite a lot of work. We already have a first couple of walls up. So that's where we're at on the parking garage. Our schedule is still looking at substantial completion of end of October 2020 and final completion uh, December 1st, 2020. With that, I'll answer any questions. Um, when is the completion of the convention center and the hotel? They're Going still stating September mm -hmm. of 2020. Um, again, substantial completion. We should be able to use the garage in October, and then the subcontractor will take that latter month into December to fine-tune any uh, punch list items. 
Okay. Any questions? All right. Thank you. Great. All right. Our marketing and how old are you today? Or what day? <laughs> you don't have to answer that, Michael. <laughs> Well, good morning. Thank you. It's, a, it's always a joy to get to t tell you about all of the great things that we have going on. Uh, the things that we're going to be looking at are, uh, for the most part, part of what we uh, discussed with our marketing committee back in November and reviewed with them uh, as well before we moved forward on any of this. Uh, uh, first, I just wanted to let you know that what we're, what we're aiming to do is just continue to build awareness about public transportation and parking services. And we, we really look at two different ways of doing that, and that's through promotions or traditional marketing. Uh, but we also use partnerships as a very uh, important uh, mechanism for leveraging relationships uh, to introduce us to new audiences. Uh, so first, we're going to talk about part, uh, promotions. One of the things that we discussed at uh, the marketing committee meeting was this opportunity uh, to be on uh, a series of Cox uh, cable channels as well as uh, the Thunder Games when they are, they are on Fox Sports Oklahoma. And so we currently have a spot running. Uh, and these spots that we're going to be uh, promoting uh, will be uh, for all of our family of services, including uh, bus use. And those will be coming out in the near future. We're working on uh, producing those as we speak. Uh, and the goal is to get people to leave the car at home and use public transit uh, to enjoy the many things around our city. And uh, that is going to be in part paid with uh, this, these spots are in part paid for by federal grant money, uh, which is known as CMAC. Uh, and that will allow us uh, to use leverage of those federal dollars with our local dollars uh, to be able to be on TV. We don't typically uh, get to afford TV, but because of this grant, uh, and what's allowed in it, it will allow us to do that. Uh, so you'll see some bus advertising, streetcar, uh, and our Spokies, uh, different ways to uh, get around Oklahoma City. Michael, that's incredible. Congratulations. When, when ha have we ever advertised when it was Metro or Embark on television before? Has that ever been? Yes? I'm seeing mm -hmm. a head nod. Uh, some, yeah, a little bit. What, uh, what sort of information would we have put on television? Yeah, so we've like got right now, but previously what I don't I don't think we've had anything embark on television. Yeah, we have. Uh, it's just been a while. Uh, back in 2014, when we launched the rebranding and the realignment okay. and started night service, uh, we did have some TV spots that ran uh, on on cable channels. Uh, but it's probably not as many as what we've got as part of this package. Uh, there'll be over 900 spots between now and the end of April. Uh, that we'll have uh, to use and to, again, promote all of our various services. That's great. Thanks. Uh, so the, the first one that we've got running is, uh, again, to promote uh, the streetcar and using it during Thunder Games. Uh, and that's this one here. <laughs> So what we did in the very beginning is we're leveraging existing uh, video footage that we've used and uh, reconfiguring it to produce these 30-second spots that we'll be able to uh, more quickly put up in front of our audiences. Uh, now looking at partnerships, what we've uh, done is try to expand our audience uh, outside of people who follow us or like us on our social media uh, and those who have traditionally supported us. We're trying to reach more people so that they are aware of the services that are available right in their neighborhood for the most part. Uh, a lot of times what we'll hear is, oh yeah, I've seen that bus stop sign, but I really don't know what to do. Uh, and so what we want to do is make sure that we're getting in front of those audiences and uh, sharing how you can use it. Uh, a few of those mechanisms, that, uh, partnerships that we're doing that through uh, are with various influencers or what they're called. They write blogs. They uh, go out and try the service. Uh, the Yelp Elite event that uh, Jesse spoke about earlier is a group who uh, many of them had never stepped on the streetcar. Uh, but yet they're some of the most uh, prominent reviewers in Oklahoma City area for restaurants, uh, destinations, 
and uh, it was their first experience, and it was one that they said that they would be back. So uh, it was a great opportunity there. Uh, we've also got uh, the sport, sports brat. She uh, she travels around. Uh, she recently uh, covered uh, the OKC streetcar as a way to uh, kind of uh, elevate your experience with the Oklahoma City Thunder uh, when you're out uh, for game day. And so be sure and check out those different things as well when we send it out to you in our monthly newsletter. If you haven't seen that, let us know. We'll make sure you're on that list. Uh, we also have uh, the Embark Eats. That's, it's a very colorful and very fun uh, a guide to using public transit and to getting to some of our local uh, eateries. And you'll find some unexpected surprises when you look at those. Uh, so the anniversary events, the things that uh, Jesse was leading up to and was uh, nice enough to let me tell you about. Uh, what we've been doing all along uh, this year has been uh, trying to figure out how do we continue uh, that, tr that, that tradition we started last year of partnering with the Curbside Chronicle and Homeless Alliance. You know, when we look back at our history as an organization, you know, helping others is, is for more than 50 years we've been doing that, uh, and it's embedded as part of our organization's DNA. So we wanted to continue that and uh, pass that along with Oklahoma City Streetcars. We can grow that service and uh, make it a relevant uh, experience in Oklahoma City. So while it may be our birthday, OKC Streetcar is the one giving the gifts. And so what you'll find with each of these events, uh, the Homeless Alliance is front and center in uh, donations and or uh, in-kind give, uh, giving that others are doing as part of these events for them. So the first one is story time with Mrs. Claus. Uh, it's a private charter uh, streetcar type event where you would board and Mrs. Claus and uh, it's a decorated streetcar and you can hear the Polar Express being read as well as uh, another uh, Christmas time uh, type book. And uh, the tickets are only $20. You'll get to experience the Santa Fe Depot uh, as well as uh, Holiday, um, sorry, my mind just left me there. Is that age, Jesse? Thank you. Uh, at, we have holiday decorations at the Santa Fe Depot as well as milk and cookies. Uh, and so they'll have a great opportunity there to just kind of experience their streetcar. It's a round, full round trip, and uh, it's uninterrupted. You'll board and exit at the same stop. And a portion of that uh, cost of those tickets, uh, will all the ticket costs or ticket prices cover the cost and then a portion of that will also go to the Homeless Alliance uh, as part of uh, the, our anniversary events. And this has been made possible through uh, a sponsorship where we're doing this as part of providing the vehicle, but Destination Oklahoma, who is a local downtown tour uh, company, they're uh, putting on the event for us. Uh, another one is uh, for those adults who want to get out and maybe leave the chaos of the holidays behind for just a little bit before it hits us all, uh, we have the Sip and Savor event. So this is for adults only. And uh, it takes place on our birthday, on the 14th, next Saturday. And uh, here's an opportunity where you can hop on the streetcar. You hop on and off. There's five different restaurants with uh, savory treats that are paired with Elk Valley Brewing uh, uh, ales. And you'll have an opportunity to taste all of those. Uh, and you have a passport that you'll go around the downtown area and try all these different treats. And then it all ends at Elk Valley that evening. And you'll have the opportunity to enjoy some uh, holiday um, movie marathon uh, as well as other games and activities uh, that they have planned there. Uh, and again, a portion of the proceeds for that ticketed event uh, would also go back to the Homeless Alliance. So on, the, on our birthday, the, the 14th, we've got quite a bit uh, uh, in store. We've got uh, our anniversary kicking off at 10 a.m. at the Chickasaw Ballpark there in Bricktown and right off uh, our ballpark uh, platform. And Jesse, correct me wrong if I'm wrong, but I believe that is our heaviest boarded stop of all 22 stops in the system. So it's going to be a pretty uh, popular spot uh, during the holidays and over the weekend. So uh, I, we definitely want to invite you to come out and enjoy uh, live music. We'll have special guests from different holiday characters. We'll also be uh, uh, having a donation drive. And we'll be putting together uh, kits for uh, those who are experiencing homelessness. Uh, so you can uh, donate gloves, lip balm, just a variety of items. And we've got those listed on our website and other, in other areas. And for doing that, you'll get a five-pack of uh, one-day passes that you can use uh, to experience at different times throughout the, uh, the year. 
Uh, and so all of those will be uh, taking place at the, the, the platform, the donation drive. Uh, but then we'll also have streetcar some of those uh, holiday characters on board the streetcars uh, making their way throughout the system. And uh, they'll be interacting with you as you're going and finishing up your holiday shopping at our local uh, retailers along the loops. And uh, we'll be available, obviously, for pictures. Now, we were talking about gifts. You can't have gifts without wrapping paper, right? So wrapping paper, we have partnered with, uh, again, with the Curbside Chronicle to be a part of their packaged uh, uh, wrapping paper uh, fundraiser that they've done. Uh, we've got some, yes, at each of your stations, and I didn't make it around to everyone before the meeting started, but I have yours as well for some sample sheets. And those here feature all of our family of services, with the exception of parking. This is transit themed, so uh, I've already uh, received Corey's forgiveness. Um, but uh, you'll also find that this theme is also on two of our streetcars. You'll see that on the, on the side. And Joshua Boydston, an artist here in the local Oklahoma City area, was able to, uh, I think, perfectly depict you know, how you can enjoy all the great destinations here in Oklahoma City using public transit, including the ferries, the streetcar, bike share, and buses. Um, that's right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so, <laughs> so here it is on board, uh, or on two of the, just uh, depicted on the two, uh, two of the streetcars like this. Uh, and you also can find this for sale at, uh, with Curbside Chronicle, uh, their, their vendors. Uh, you can pick up different packages. There's different themes and different packages. Uh, and it's just an awesome opportunity to uh, support those who are experiencing homelessness and trying to get out of uh, that uh, situation. So finally, what I'd like to also tell you about is uh, some of our technology updates. Uh, we have been working on for quite a while a custom map that would allow us to see where the streetcar vehicles are located and uh, at the same time give you arrival ETAs. Uh, so the phase one of this development, it's not, it's going to continually be evolving and changing and as we receive your feedback and feedback from the community. Uh, but basically what we will be seeing uh, is a, sending out an email to you with a direct link to the site so that you can start trying it out uh, and then providing feedback through a link that's on uh, the, uh, the menu there uh, when you use it. And we hope to be launching this publicly uh, short, uh, shortly thereafter. Uh, this will be another tool that we can use to promote uh, how easy it is to use a streetcar as well as communicate like what Jesse was saying, how you can use the couplets uh, to your advantage and getting to different parts of the city faster by just walking maybe a block in either direction. And with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. Well, it sounds like you've been busy and I have seen the ads on TV already and they're oh, really good. good. Yeah. Very good. Yes, so that, that rotation started in late November, early December, yeah. And just, uh, you're right, this has been a very busy year. I just wanted to take a second to mention, if I'm not uh, stealing anyone else's thunder, but you know, in the last 12 months, we've launched the modern, a modern streetcar, we launched Sunday bus service, we kicked off the Embarkwell Senior Transportation, started construction on a new parking garage in a brand new district, uh, we've launched holiday bus service. We launched Dockless Spokies bikes. Uh, we have uh, we've nearly completed on a CNG facility. Uh, it, it's just been a fantastic year. And to top it off, we just added service to the city of Norman. So uh, thank you for your leadership and allowing all of us to, to do these fun things. It's great to be a part of something that's changing lives here in the community. Well, go back a couple of years and read your job description, and I bet it didn't involve all of that. Okay. You know, they handled that really saying, well. It's just minute. one line. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Thanks again. <Sir. laughs> we got to throw the exciting uh, uh, bond defeasance and refinancing in there, too, you know. I mean, that <clears throat> not quite as exciting as some of the other projects, but a lot of work and very beneficial to the, to the overall financial stability of the parking system. So, yeah, we've been busy, haven't yeah. we? All right, I'd have a motion to receive our program reports. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right, items from the trustees. 
Mr. Cooper, you ask a question, sound like you had your councilman hat on when we talked about the state. Well, I, I'm hopeful the other council person on this uh, trust shares that concern as well. I've heard him talk. I think he does. Um, no, I, no, I don't want to say anything more about that yet, but I do want to say happy birthday to Michael. Uh, Michael has been a very kind, um, informative, and welcoming um, uh, person ever since I've joined COTPA, and I've just really appreciated his, uh, his friendship and mentorship. So thank you, Michael, and uh, happy birthday. Okay. David, no? All right. Jason? Got one more thing to say, I'll bet. No. Okay, yeah. No, I'll make it quick. Uh, no. Two, two items. Uh, I did want to just let the trustees know that uh, working with our partners at the state of Oklahoma, uh, ODOT SSO, State Safety Oversight Office, we kicked off our first official um, annual uh, safety audit. And uh, I mentioned that just because, you know, <clears throat> safety is always at the top of our mind. Um, we received uh, support from the trustees and the council on expanding our uh, capabilities of our safety department in this last fiscal year. And uh, so we look forward to continuing to work with, um, with ODOT, uh, particularly with our fixed guideway, our streetcar operation, and ensuring it is the, uh, the, the safest system that it can possibly be. Uh, the other thing I did want to mention, and, and Michael spent a lot of time talking about our marketing efforts, but again, we just want to really thank, I want to thank the marketing committee for the support of um, you know, this approach this year with our marketing efforts being about creating awareness of transit and our services. You know, uh, Michael just <laughs> kind of mentioned the whole list of things we've been busy on for the last you know, two, three years, and it's always been about introducing new, new services and bringing new modes online. And so we're really looking forward to the opportunity to now be able to spend some time on promoting our system as it is. So thanks for the support of the trustees and uh, for the marketing committee, your time in particular. Thank you. All right. Well, since we won't see each other again until next year, I do want to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And, uh, and uh, if you're downtown on December New Year's Eve, please ride public transportation. <laughs> All right. We're adjourned. <laughs>